Introduction. As you can hear after a few sentences from my part, I'm French, so English is not my language. But by chance, I grew up, I started to read a comics, graphic novel at the age of four, and actually it was like to learn a language. And that's why also on the French market, comics graphic novels are so successful because we start very young to learn and to teach this language. That's really a key point and I wanted to start with this and it's also, it helps me because I'm working with authors from different countries and only speak my French, English, a part of German, but actually comics and graphic novel, it's a language. So it helps me a lot. So if I, if I would like to, to sum up my job, it's just to be a bridge between a project and a publisher. If you are authors, of course you can work with or without agencies, but it depends in North America, even if you have a beautiful project, you are kind of obliged to pitch your project with an agency. So this is very different. So my job apart, and I have time, if you want to meet me after the talk, if you want to pitch me your project, if you want to talk about ideas of what you would like to develop, I'm open of course for it. Again, a part of my job is to listen to stories, to looking for stories. So. And then, it's what I have done in the last two days, I have met British publishers, and again, it's to listen about what they want. And Karen, you were right, comics, graphic novels, nowadays it's for everybody. That was not the case a few years ago. So it could be a fiction, it could be a non-fiction, it's for all the targets, for kids, for adults, so you can develop whatever you want. And I will go further about it, but the best chance, and again, I don't say that because I'm French, but the best chance for you to be published, it will be on the French market. And no matter about in which language, that's very important, if you would like to write into Spanish, into Mandarin, into Hebrew, the better chance actually it's to be published on the French market. Like a comics lover, if he has to know a language, it would be the French language because we can have the more diversity. I'm working with authors from Central America. The first publication sometimes is not in Central America because unfortunately sometimes there is no graphic novels publishers there. And maybe uh, in Spain is quite different, so the first publication it's into French, but the, the writing for the story it's into Spanish, so it's totally fine, you don't have to learn French. <laughs> so me, my, I started my agency in 2011, but before I was in charge to to buy the licenses from Japan. And what I kept in mind from Japan, uh, the authors from Japan, the name is Mangaka, they never change the way to tell their own story to appeal to other readers outside Japan. And of course, manga, we can find manga everywhere. I remember I was in Nicaragua 
somewhere in the middle of nowhere and suddenly a teenager with a t-shirt of Naruto came to me. So we have the Japanese culture everywhere. What is important for Mon what I learned from the mangaka, there is two layers inside their book in general. They use a lot the Japanese background, a lot of uh, ingredients about the culture from Japan. So they don't try to be international and to hide their own culture. But at the same time, the second layer is like it's very universal. Like if you are a shonen reader, it's a quest, and this um, it's a mirror for everybody. It's a mirror for readers in Japan, in Berlin, in Paris, in London. So that's why we can find uh, Japanese books uh, everywhere. <coughs> so, uh, one second. So it was mostly shonen at that time, Attack, Attack on Titan, for example. But me, uh, what I like as a reader, it was more something on the edge about what we were publishing at that time. So it's Gekiga, it's uh, to talk in a manga about the society. So it's, it's a pure non-fiction from uh, Japan. So I learned my job through the Japanese agencies because actually we were buying uh, titles through the Japanese agency and then I just had the idea to make the same but uh, from Europe and to sell the rights of books in the, the States or in North America. So this one, it's uh, the first graphic novel I have sold uh, in the state. In the states, sorry, uh, it's a translation uh, from French into English. And actually, the American publisher at that time, it was ten years ago, said, "Okay, Nicola, we love this project, but the point, we don't, we don't know any translators." Because in North America, at that time, for comics, it was unusual to buy rights and to make a translation. And also, it's because of the architecture of the publishing companies uh, in North America, sometimes it's hard to deal with an editor who is able to speak uh, different languages. So that's why, me, it's to bring project but it's really to be with translators and translators with different languages. So I'm working with translators from Italian into English, German into English, etc., etc. And of course, it was also to, not to explain, but uh, to have the best translation as possible for the readers. They don't have to feel it's a translation nothing more, but at that time it was tricky. <coughs> so, step by step, I was like, okay, uh, it was a book already published in a language, so my job it was to find another language for this same book. This one is from a, an Italian artist, uh, this one is from a French artist, and what I prefer as a literary agent, when you are, that was my case before, when you are an editor, you are a little bit a prisoner of the line, of the catalog of your publishing company. Me, as a literary agent, I can take, represent whatever I like. So it could be a comics for kids, that's the case. It could be a non-fiction uh, in Beirut. It could be a book about climate change. I have no line, so I can do whatever I want when the authors they want to work with me. That's the point. Uh, and me, I try to mix uh, two passions. So I'm passionate uh, by the comics, and also I like to travel. So every time I'm going to a country, like 
the case I, I went to mainland China. It's really uh, to ask to the librarians, to the journalists, to the editors, to visit schools and always to ask, okay, if you have to keep uh, three names from China, which names you will pick? And it helps me to find new voices from the different uh, countries. Well, I will be fast. I, I was scouting for Laika, but what helped me actually after, it's really, uh, they were so sharp, uh, it helped me a lot to pitch the project. And uh, it will be the second part of the talk, really how to introduce your project, your story, to the editors. The first point, you need to keep in mind that you know exactly what you want to tell, it's you, but when you will send or when you will meet uh, an editor, they don't know nothing about your project. So you need to go step by step and to catch them and to see, okay, it will appeal uh, for them. So, some examples, I was in, uh, in Israel recently, so I found, uh, I found someone, it, uh, I, I do prefer memoirs and non-fiction. So this one, it's uh, uh, the life of uh, Aya Talshir, it, it's a comics about uh, two years inside the Israeli uh, army. Uh, this one is uh, an artist from uh, South Korea. It's about uh, the family who have been divided uh, after the Korean War. Some people, some part of the family have been trapped in North Korea. So that's also uh, interesting to, to see that the English version is that the French version. So sometimes for the cover is totally totally different. So artists from Singapore, sometimes French artists, but really I'm uh, artists uh, from uh, China. For example, this one it's a book written in Mandarin, but the first publication it's in French actually. So. What is important is to go to some uh, key conventions like San Diego, Guadalajara, Angoulême Festival, Bologna, Frankfurt, this kind of convention. Uh, this one, it was in South Korea because it's really a trend with uh, webtoons uh, nowadays. But again, every time I'm going to a country, it's to, to see what kind of stories could be uh, told to the readers, but at the same time I try to, to build some projects that could be translated at least in four or five languages. Four or five languages, the first one in general is French, the second one is English. English is not also a question to be uh, available uh, to the Polish, uh, Italian, Spanish publishers, but the, to be um, publish in English is so challenging that it helps a lot to have contracts with the different uh, languages. So this was, uh, and I always uh, took pictures to find uh, IDs, uh, it was like in, in Guatemala for this one. And again, it's always uh, to be international, you need to find two layers on the story you want to tell, from a fiction or non-fiction. So this one, it's, uh, it's grass, it's about a comfort woman during the World War II, but actually that the two layers, and that's why this book has been translated in more than 20 languages, it's, that's why. So, Maybe I will more focus about if you have a project, how you can pitch this one. So first, this one is a new project by Edo Brenes. 
is from Costa Rica. Uh, he came to the festival, I think it was last year or two years ago, and uh, I found the work of uh, Edo Brenes is thanks to a competition. We are doing a competition for new talents in Central America every two years and it helps to find new storytellers. So if you want to pitch a project to the publishing companies, no matter, it could be for the French market, it could be in UK, it could be in North America, it could be in Spain or in Latin America, you have to make a one PDF for your pitch and you need to think that you need to start with the cover. Because for me, it's like to bring the editors to a bookstore and to show them how it will look like for the project you would like to develop thanks to the cover. Then, you need, because it's a project, uh, it's not finished. So, my goal is to develop with the authors, like a first editor at the beginning, a project to make a presentation. And the goal is to find enough money to continue the project. If I would not have, uh, I would not find enough, uh, not a good advance to develop the project, we stop the project because it can be very toxic for the author. So that's very a key point as well. On the second page of the presentation of your project, it's like technical information. So how many pages it will be, but this presentation actually, there is two goals. It helps me, of course, to convince, to pursue the publishing companies, but for you as an author, it's like a mirror, because you know exactly where you are you are going for with your project. How many pages you need to anticipate how much time you will need to make this book happen with this kind of page, uh, number of pages. So you can add, of course, the presentation in general is in to English, but you can add the info if the project will be written in Italian, in Spanish, in German, of course, it's on the technical information. It's very important because this kind of presentation for the authors is also to, to teach them to control their project. So it's important to say, okay, in which format you want to develop a project. Otherwise, it will be complicated after if you want to have a uh, album format or if you want to have a graphic novel format so it's better to know at the beginning what you want.